Hello everyone, I wanna use this example to talk about another difference between our lines and two and three dimensional space. In two dimensional space, our lines are either parallel lines or intersecting lines. They can intersect at a single point or they could intersect at infinitely many points, but that would only occur if they were actually the same line. In three-dimensional space, we have some of those same situations, like we could have parallel lines or intersecting lines, but now we can also have what we call our skew lines. And so what are skew lines? Skew lines are two lines that do not intersect and are not parallel. And so this is a situation that is impossible in two dimensions, but it's easy to see that it is possible in three dimensions. Just suppose you have a, a line that looks something like this, that lies entirely in this horizontal plane. And then suppose you have another line in some other horizontal plane that is going off at a different angle that is not parallel to our first line. Well then, these two lines are clearly never going to intersect and they are not parallel. So that's a visual little example of two lines that we say are skew. So in this example, we wanna determine if the following lines are parallel lines, intersecting lines, or are skew lines. And so if they're gonna be intersecting lines, we wanna talk about how to find that point of intersection. So how do we go about determining if uh, two given lines are parallel, intersecting, or are skew lines? Well, we can start by answering the question, are these two lines parallel? Well, let's go ahead and look at the direction vector for each line. Remember, two lines are going to be parallel if they're pointing in the same direction or if their direction vectors are parallel vectors. So here we have the uh, parametric equations for our first line. Our first line has x coordinates given by one plus t. The y coordinates are given by negative two plus three t. And the z coordinates are given by four minus t. Our second line has a separate set of parametric equations to describe it. Its parametric equations are x is equal to 2s, y is equal to 3 plus s, and z is equal to negative 3 plus 4s. A really important note to make here is when we're going to be doing this work with two different lines that are described parametrically, it's really important to use two different parameters for each line. We cannot use the same parameter, say t, for both lines because if these lines did have a point of intersection, um, then that point of intersection might correspond to one t value up here, but might correspond to a totally different parameter or t value down here in the second line. And so when we do the algebra of finding a potential point of intersection, using the same parameter for both the equations would put us in a situation where we can't figure out the point of intersection accurately. So always remember to use two different parameters when we're working with uh, two different lines. So back to the first part, how do we determine if two lines are parallel? Well, do they have the same direction or not? Well, what is the direction of our first line? We just have to identify those direction numbers or those coefficients in front of t. So our first line, L1, is gonna have direction numbers of one, three, and negative one. And so our first line travels in the direction given by this vector of one, three, and negative one. What are the direction numbers for our second line? Well, they're just the coefficients in front of the second line's parameter of s. So those are gonna be two, one, and four. Remember, two vectors are parallel if they are constant multiples of each other. So we can see the first component for vector two is two times the size of the first component for vector one, but the second component is not twice the size of the second component for vector two. So right away we can see V1 and V2 are not parallel. If they were parallel, then we'd be able to find some number that we can multiply V1 by and turn V1 into V2. Because that is not the case here, we can see and we know that these two lines are not parallel. So that means these two lines are either going to intersect or they're going to be skew lines. And the way we determine whether they are intersecting or skew lines is the same. We try to find a point of intersection. If we can find it, then the lines intersect. If we cannot find this point of intersection, then that means the lines must be skew. So if we do wanna to try to find that potential point of intersection between our two lines, we know that the two lines are gonna intersect when their x, y, and z coordinates are exactly the same. So that means our equation for x1 has to be equal to our equation for x2, which tells us one plus t has to be equal to two s. 
Similarly, if we have a point of intersection, not only do the x coordinates have to be the same, but the y coordinates have to be the same as well, which means negative 2 plus 3t would have to also be equal to 3 plus s. And then just to finish this off, the z coordinates, of course, have to be the same. And that gives us our third equation in our system. Uh, 4 minus t is going to be equal to negative 3 plus 4s. And so now to make further progress in this problem, we have to solve this 3 by 3 system of linear equations. So this is what some people would call an overdetermined system, and we should be able to solve it and find some values for t and s using only two of the equations. However, to make sure it actually works, we have to then check that our solutions in that third or unused equation. So let's go ahead and see what those steps are going to look like. So the way I recommend trying to solve these types of systems of equations that are involved in determining if lines are intersecting or are skew lines is just by using the elimination method. So is there some combination of our three equations that we can take that is going to eliminate one of our variables? And the one that jumps out to me is, well, we can eliminate the variable or parameter of t by adding the first and third equation together. And so if we take equation 1 and add it to equation 3, on the left-hand side, we're going to get 1 plus 4, which is 5. We'll also get t plus negative t, which gives us 0t and eliminates that variable. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to get um, negative 3 plus 6s. Well, from that equation, 5 is equal to negative 3 plus 6 times s, so we can solve for s, right? We just have to add 3 to each side and then divide both sides by 6. That will give us 8 is equal to 6s. Then dividing both sides by 6 gives us s is equal to 8 over 6, which reduces down to 4 thirds. So now we know the value for one of our parameters s. We need to use that to go back and find the value for that other parameter or variable t. And so using equation 1, we can see that t is going to be equal to 2 times s minus 1. Right? I just solved for t here by subtracting 1 from each side. And since we know our s value is 4 thirds, that tells us t is going to be equal to 8 thirds minus 1, or 8 thirds minus 3 over 3, which will give us t is equal to 5 thirds. So notice we did solve this system of equations and found the values for our variables of s and t. We saw s has to be equal to 4 thirds and t has to be equal to 5 thirds. However, we are not done yet. A couple things to notice is we've only used equation 1 and equation 3 to find the values of these parameters s and t. So all that really has guaranteed is that our first and third equations are equal to each other. That's like saying our x and z coordinates are equal to each other. It doesn't guarantee that our y coordinates are going to be equal to each other. So the way we do that is by plug t and s into our second unused equation. If that gives us a true statement, then that means the y coordinates will be the same and will be equal to each other, and we do have a point of intersection. If we get an untrue statement or a contradiction here, something that is false, then that means that the y coordinates are not equal to each other, we do not have a point of intersection, and our lines are skew. All right, so let's go ahead and check our second equation out. So we have negative 2 plus 3 times our t value of 5 thirds. And is that equal to 3 plus our s value of 4 thirds? Let's see. On the left-hand side, those factors of 3 cancel out, and we get negative 2 plus 5, which is positive 3. And on the right-hand side, well, we get 3 plus 4 thirds, which is 3 and 4 thirds, or um, 13 thirds. And those are certainly not equal. So because the solution to our system of equations does not actually solve all three equations in our system, the way we interpret that is it is telling us that our lines are actually skew lines. If we solved our system of equations here and checked our solution in that unused equation and we got a true statement, that would be our indicator that we actually have intersecting lines. The values of s and t do not tell us the point of intersection. We have to plug s and t into the uh, parametric equations for the lines to then go and find that point of intersection. But through this example, we've seen how to determine if lines are parallel, skew lines, or intersecting lines, and if they were intersecting lines, how to finish it off and find that point of intersection.